The C5 Corvette's pumping out over 600 horsepower and it's doing it on a bone stock exhaust. Conventional wisdom tells us that's killing a lot of horsepower. So we're going to test the exhaust back pressure and find out. Toys for life. Simply throwing money at parts is not a sound approach. It's a fact that horsepower is made by more air and fuel going in, balanced by more exhaust going out. With this fact in mind, we are going to test the stock C5 Corvette back pressure to see if it is up to the task or if it's stealing a lot of horsepower from the supercharged LS1. So here's a view of the C5 from the top looking down. Up front, of course, you've got the mighty LS1. And then there's a true dual exhaust feeding back to a pup cat on each side followed by a catalytic converter, the H-pipe, and of course at the back, the mufflers. First step is drilling a small hole between the exhaust manifold and the pup cat. Then we're going to install a pressure gauge with a copper line so we can measure the back pressure. First step is to center punch where we're going to drill. Drill the hole. Using a tap, make some threads. Install the first fitting with a copper washer. And the next is an adapter. Followed by the copper line itself. Then we're going to run the line and securing it and running it up the side of the car. I've got it in some protective tubing so it won't scratch the paint. And the gauge is taped to the window so I can look at it from the passenger seat. All right, first test up to 4,000 RPMs. And in slow motion, we've got a peak of five and a half pounds per square inch. Next test up to 5,000 RPMs. And in slow motion, it peaks out at about 10 pounds per square inch. So let's run it up to 6,500 RPMs and it maxes out early at 10, so we probably have about 15 pounds per square inch. So what does 10 to 15 pounds per square inch of back pressure tell us? According to the late, great John Lingenfelter, numbers above five pounds per square inch of back pressure are typically worth investigating in the search for more horsepower. Since we're at around three times that number, Clearly, more investigation is in order. If money was no object and I was after every last horsepower, then I would go with a set of long tube headers and a dual three inch exhaust. However, money is an object, it always is, and I'm really not willing to deal with the high underhood temperatures the headers put out for a street car, at this point in time anyway. So what's the next step in our investigation? Well, for the first test, we had the port in front of the first pup cat so that 15 pounds is for the entire exhaust system. Now let's move the port to behind the second cat. So that'll be isolating the stock C5 muffler with exhaust mod bypass to see exactly how much back pressure is attributable to the muffler itself. Attaching the pressure gauge behind the catalytic converters is actually easier. I'll just tap into the rear oxygen sensor bung and put this in its place. This is already drilled and tapped to accept the copper pipe going to the pressure gauge. Here you can see where I attached the copper pipe to the rear oxygen sensor bung, taped it to the underside of the floor, and then proceeded up the side of the car, over the roof, to the windshield. First test up to 4500 RPMs and it peaks out at 3.5 PSI. Second test up to 5500 RPMs and it peaks out at about almost 6 PSI. And last, up to 6,500 RPM, peaks out at a little over 7 PSI. Not too bad, actually. The back pressure tests have proven that the stock exhaust is robbing horsepower. The question is, how much? For help answering that question, let's take a look back at some dyno testing done by Engine Masters in 2016. They, they took a 620 horsepower engine, ran it through headers and open exhaust, and they got 620 horsepower. They attached a dual two and a half inch full system with mufflers, no catalytic converters, and they got 601 horsepower. So using that information, I'm gonna guess that this setup is costing about 25 to 35 horsepower because we're running it through 
catalytic converters and a two and two and a half inch exhaust. So now that I have a fairly good idea of how much horsepower the stock exhaust is costing me, what should I do about it? Right now I'm leaning towards finding a used two and a half inch or three inch mid pipe and swapping it into the Corvette without catalytic converters, doing some more back pressure testing, and then follow that up with a trip to the drag strip to see if I can improve upon the 130 mile an hour trap speeds in the quarter mile. What do you guys think I should do? Please go ahead and leave any ideas that you have in the comments below. I'll be sure to look at them and include them in a follow-up video on the quest for more horsepower through better exhaust on the C5. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to share, like, and subscribe. Now get out to your garage and work on something. And as always, thanks for watching.